Hello everyone and welcome to this week's behind the scenes devlog video and it is Thursday morning. I've already got a few days of work done this week uh, but it's been very boring stuff so far. Um, I've basically just been redoing a load of code that I wasn't very happy with so I didn't really think it was worth filming but today I'm getting back to my main tasks and I have a whole load of rather annoying little tasks to do with the entity system which I've actually been trying to work through over the last few weeks uh, but it's just been going very slowly. They're kind of blocking my way to being able to add more species into the game and they're just taking ages because I don't really have that much motivation to do them. So I really just want to get them all done and finished so that I can move on and I have got up nice and early today. I'm just going to try and power through them all today and tomorrow with no distractions, just going to work on them all day and hopefully I will be finally able to get back to working on the fun stuff and adding more species into the game next week. So I'm just about to start off for the day, I've just had my breakfast and the first task that I'm going to be working on is the highlight sizes uh, which is to do with the circular highlight that you can see whenever you mouse over an entity which in some cases, uh, like for the trees, appears to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to do a bit of work on the size calculation. So as you can see the circular highlights for the entities are now a bit more reasonably sized so that is the first task of the day finished. Next up today I've been expanding the classification system and I added in a method which allows you to test whether a classification is a type of another classification and I did that because of this task here, this task needs to know whether an entity is an animal or a plant and that is now possible using the isTypeOf method. So that task is now finished and it's now on to the next one. It is 10 to 11 now and this morning has been going very well. I've been making lots of progress and I've just stopped for a mid-morning snack now which is a cheese and onion pancake which I just made and I've also just finished off the next task uh, which was to do with how sensitive entities are to environmental factors. So for example we've got these two entities here, these two trees. They are both affected by an altitude factor. They're both actually growing at an altitude that they're unhappy with uh, but you can see that this has affected the juniper tree a lot more than it has affected the Acer tree and this is because I'm now able to set how sensitive entities are to their environment factors um, in the entity files. Next up I need to fix a bug where if you grab a piece of grass which is currently being eaten by a sheep, the sheep still manages to eat it and then you get this circular highlight stuck in the world. So I'm going to try and fix that now. So I've just finished fixing that issue with the grass being removed while the sheep's eating it. So you can see here that if I remove the grass or if the grass dies while the sheep's eating it, uh, the sheep will just stop eating it and go and find some other grass to eat. So that's that done. I also fixed a few other things with the grass. So that is another three tasks finished. Just stopping for some lunch now and to finish off the morning I was doing a bit of work on the grabbing mechanic, making sure that entities are held at a reasonable height above the ground depending on the size of the entity and other stuff like that. It is 6 o'clock now and this afternoon progress was a little bit slower, I think I was starting to tire out a bit but I did do some work on a sound component which will allow entities to emit sound effects and I also fixed a bug um, to do with entity dying animations. And I've also just started considering, thinking about adding clouds into the game, um, but no concrete plans yet. Good morning everyone, it is Friday morning, it's even earlier today, it's only 6.30 at the moment, and again today I just want to get through as many of these entity tasks as possible, and hopefully make a lot of good progress. So first up today I've been doing some work on how the local population affects an entity's health, and up until now I've just had it that the entity's health is only affected by the number of nearby entities of the same species. So for example you couldn't grow 100 oak trees in the same area because there wouldn't be enough resources for all of them and that's why you can see that these populations of trees aren't able to increase to any more than about 5 or 6 trees in each area. However until now the entities weren't really affected by entities from other species but thanks to the classification system I've been able to change that and so the entities are now affected by the local population of entities with a similar classification and not just entities from the same species. So over here I've got a group of various different trees and you can see that there's only about two of each tree species able to grow here compared to the usual five or six because the trees are now fighting for resources with all of the other species of trees and not just with their own species. Next up today I've been doing a bit more work with the classification system and I've added this new functionality which allows me to get all of the entities of a certain classification from a certain grid square 
So I could now ask it to get me all of the plants from a certain grid square, and it can do that very quickly and efficiently now. So because of that, I have now been able to make sure that you can't place an entity in the same place as another entity of the same classification. So previously, for example, you couldn't place uh, an oak tree on top of another oak tree, like you can see here. But now I've been able to extend that so that you can't place an oak tree on top of any other tree, like you can see me trying to do here. It is quarter to 12 now and I've just been doing a little bit more work on this entity placement restriction stuff. So I've now made sure that you can't place two baby trees pretty close to each other because they're very small, um, but then they would grow up and clip into each other. So I've now made it so that the restricted area around a baby tree is not based on the size of the baby tree, but based on the size of how big the tree would be when it's fully grown. So you can see here that you now have to leave quite a big gap between baby trees when you're planting them uh, to make sure that when they grow up, they're not clipping into each other. And this of course is the same for when trees spawn. It's the same for when you grab and place trees. Um, but this is only for trees, so you'd still be able to plant grass or other plants in that restricted area. Just stopping for a bit of lunch now, and today I've made myself some wraps. It's 5 o'clock now, and all afternoon today I've been working on being able to have more control over entity model stages, and this is mainly for things like the berries on a berry bush. So, up until now, the only thing that's been changing the model stages was the growth component, and it would just switch between the various model stages of an entity as the entity gets older, until the entity is fully grown. But this afternoon I've been working on allowing for some model stages to be separate from the growth stages so that they're not part of the entity's natural growth, and then these additional model stages can be controlled by other components. So, for example, I'm now able to have a fruit producing component which controls when the berries spawn on the bush, and then other components could then remove the berries from the bush like this, which obviously could happen when an animal eats the berries off the bush or something like that. So this allows for a lot more flexibility when it comes to the appearance of an entity, and this will obviously be especially useful for entities that produce fruit. So to finish off the day today, I really just wanted to do something a little bit more interesting and entertaining than all of this entity system code that I've been working on all week. So as you can see, I have now started adding clouds into the game, and I literally just started doing this now, so they're not moving or dynamic at all at the moment. All they are is just the same cloud model repeated over and over again in the sky. Um, but it's actually quite a nice effect already, so I'll definitely keep these in the game. I'm definitely going to make them dynamic, and then maybe in the future I can even have weather systems and have them gathering over certain areas in the world and stuff like that. But um, for now, I think they're just going to be aesthetic. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with them, and uh, they look pretty nice. Just finishing off the day now, and uh, I didn't really do any more programming today. I just spent the evening answering comments and emails. And I've also actually been listening to a podcast that I discovered recently called The Programming Throwdown Podcast, which I find pretty interesting. So um, if you haven't heard of that, it's definitely worth checking out, and I'll put a link to that in the description. So it is now Saturday, and today I've just been editing together this week's behind the scenes devlog video, and I also did a little bit more work on the code for the clouds, which I'll be able to show you in the next devlog video. But for this week, that is pretty much going to be it. Next week, I've actually got a few other things going on. Um, my parents are coming to visit me tomorrow, and I'm going to be spending a few days with them, and then I'm going to be going to Munster for a few days with a couple of friends. So um, there's actually not going to be a devlog video next weekend because I'm just not going to have enough time to get any progress done in the game. So sorry about that, uh, but there will of course be one the week after. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.